on the 20th of June, uh, that is the coming Sunday. And the elections from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Polling stations are going to be open in a lot of places, I suppose, and we're going to find out all about that. We're talking to Anita Quintas in um, Anogeny. Uh, how is this voting process going to happen? Is it, is it going to be You'll have to polling? go to polling booths to vote. And um, people who are above the age of 16, who are born before June 20th, 1994, are eligible to vote. Uh, there will be a lot similar to the referendum. Uh, there just won't be a physical machine at each booth, but there'll be polling stations all over mm -hmm. the place, but we would be uh, having counting centers in certain regions, again, cost-cutting measures to make sure that um, we're not wasting another, a lot of money on another third election. So this, uh, this one would be, again, very close to you. You can be able to go and vote, as she said, 16 and above, uh, go out, vote, you just need your ID. Um, two pieces of ID and again just go in, simply go in, vote, cast your ballot. Um, you should be able to uh, get a pre-idea from the elections.ca site and choose who you want to vote for, think about it a bit, and then go in and mark off the sheets. So that's where the voting happens and again it's 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Sunday, June 20th. And more information will be posted up on the website at tamaelections.ca. But uh, Anita said uh, all the candidates will be given um, unique numbers. So uh, if, for example, Raghavan has uh, number six, then if uh, whoever who wants to choose Raghavan, he, he's our host, so um, then they can go with the numbers. So if they say because of too many people to be elected, some people's question was like, how many are there and how are we going to remember all this? They can always write up their names, keep a paper or write the numbers, go with the numbers. There may be some uh, people who are there outside the booth, of course, and uh, say, okay, vote for me. That is the democratic process that happens even in the federal level. Then you have the liberty to go into the booth and choose your own candidate, right? So you can have the numbers, you can have the names or whatever, whatnot, and when you go in, it's your own pick and choose thing. Uh, they don't have to worry about, oh, there were people telling this, telling that. Hey, that's all part of the game. Democratic process means uh, anybody can say anything. Then it's up to them. They can choose their numbers. Okay, so these numbers are numbers affiliated to the candidates that are listed on the website? On the website, uh, in all, all local newspapers, uh, local media, radio, TV, everywhere, it will be published this week. This week, um, people will be um, directly engaged with all this information, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the website, tamilelections.ca. Uh, Tamil uh, we'll give them all uh, um, relevant information, including names and numbers. They can pick their own candidates. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned... Uh, earlier on in Ojani that uh, there are women, there was, there's youth, and then there's general. General. Right? Can, <clears throat> can you specify, classify how this happened and why there is this division? So it's to give equal representation, right? And you can see that, that it was a hot topic even in Canadian politics, you know, having given equal representation to women and uh, to women. And in our NCCT, so it's really important that because we have to, as youths, we need to understand, and I think we've already understood, as you can tell by the results well, of the people who submitted their nominations for NCCT, everything is in, in our hands. Practically, we just have to lead our community, take on initiatives, and just go for it because we can't step back. So as youths, um, it's very important to have our say in NCCT. And women, um, they were given a lot of importance back home. And there's slight of a backdrop down here, but now they're on their game again. And women have the equal rights to voice, to raise their voices on issues to do with our community. And, you know, it's just getting involved with the Canadian Mosaic and, you know, having our say and pushing forward and grounding our roots in Canada so that we can actually make a difference and make sure that our voices are heard. With the formation of this council, that there's that representation of women. And right from the get-go, if that's there, then and the representation of women and youth, I think this, the organization is going to thrive again. Um, the, uh, even in the open category, even in the general category, a youth could have chose to run in the, as open candidate. A uh, woman could have chosen to run they as an are. open candidate, which is happening actually so, in, yeah. the, in the different levels. So this goes to show that people are interested, they want to run. Um, we talked about number of candidates that have submitted nominations. 51 people have come forward to submit these nominations. So that. That alone, that's a, that's a big number of people that are contesting and, and I think that 
the formation of this council, especially with the women and youth, um, the minimum mandatory requirement for the minimum <coughs> for the women and youth is a big step. And I think the uh, and it's going to say something about our community, and it's going to give out a strong message about our community and. Uh, the involvement of women yeah. and youth in yeah. the It's showing that we're willing on to take on power. We've taken on power in our hands and we're going to deal with this. Now, I have another question. We just came out of an election, transnational government, and we know how that uh, process, you know, uh, unveiled. There was this formation committee that worked on running this election to form the transnational government, especially the Canadian caucus for that. That's what we know about, and the same happened in other countries. And then beyond all of this, they had this advisory committee, which comprised of lots of uh, people, eminent people from around the world, uh, including some professors and uh, lawyers and whoever from Europe and Canada and uh, USA, and, and some from uh, far, far uh, East Asia as well. So for this National Council of Canadian Tamils, is there, is there somewhere to fall back on? Can they, can they fall back on a certain committee that's going to say, these are some of the things that we need to look at, but then again, it's up to you or how, it's really how does it gonna, work? It's really going to depend on the elected body. This is why the, it, it needs to be a democratic process. And if the elected body, the board of 22 that comes in, uh, feels that they need an advisory report, then they, it's up to their discretion to implement that. But as of now, um, there's just been volunteers to run the, run the election. Um, so there's Tamil Elections Canada that's running the election process. And then there's a uh, few volunteers that have, you know, just been working behind the scenes and kind of just you know, don't want to have anything to do with it afterwards. Kind of, uh, kind of uh, setup. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like so, the formation committee for the thing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On top of it, uh, actually, uh, originally we said 51. Actually, it's 48. Uh, just to correct ourselves, um, okay. 48 will be elected. Okay. Um, so this is a big body. Um, we have to, if we uh, rewind it a little ba backward, uh, what we can uh, recall is that even before the first election, the Avata um, resolution. resolution election, before that there were uh, talks about these three elections. Right. Uh, these three steps will be um, run. And the first one, uh, even before the first one, there were consultants, advisors who were involved for the past six, seven months, eight months, one year. They were talking about all these things and how we have to move forward. and. <laughs> Uh, what are the implications of um, having different groups while leveraging on each other, mm -hmm. you know? And um, now it has come to the third one. Uh, everyone, everyone was decided right before the first election, and now the third election is happening. So there are not separate advisory bodies or separate uh, mm -hmm. entities deciding for each, each mm -hmm. other, and they are all uh, going to work separately. No, they are all going to leverage on each other, especially we have to remember that our youth body is very strong. Diaspora youth, it's very strong. Then uniting them, coordinating them, uh, bringing them to one table and um, get the best out of the youth, out of the women, out of the whole diaspora, it's uh, falling on the Tamil community. And if they uh, elect in, uh, if they go in big numbers and vote, elect good body, then they can question. If they stay home, uh, finding fault with them, as in the past, sometimes we did it, Nothing is going to work. So everyone has your voice. It's up to us to bring up these issues that we're facing to the NCCT so that they will work towards like how to fix these issues. So like for example, like we have a lot of Tamil kids in our schools and we don't have the exact like a, like the rep of Tamil staff to help these kids and refugee problems. You know, there's quiet deportations happening here and we have to stop that. So stuff like that. So it's up to the Tamil community to bring out these issues to the NCCT so they will work along with the Tamil community to solve these problems. All that was in consultation with the community. The initial uh, constitution, that preliminary constitution that was floating around for, for right, feedback. Right, I remember we covered a lot of um, exactly. town halls where people talked about this election and mm -hmm. you know, what are some of the things that we need to do, Definitely. how do you want this to shape into. Exactly, yeah. so based on that there's that sketch. And now these individuals need to be elected and then again from the grass, grassroots being able to um, tell tell the elected body what we want to see and what we can offer and, and for them to be able to propose their, um, is if you notice that each of the candidates were asked for their bio and their vision. What's their vision for NCCT? That was an important question on the nomination form itself because you know, we want to be able to publish this information and say this is what this person, why this person is running and what they foresee for 
such a council. Um, yeah. And just speaking of um, uh, the vision and stuff, just reminds me that 